Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, we're on day three of my retrofit of my desk to turn it into a mineral display case. Um, I've got the shelves out back into the garage right now. And the next step that we're gonna do is we need to stain and encoat this. I'm really hoping we can get this uh, project completed today because that's all we gotta do is stain it, put the coating on it and wire it up. And hopefully that should happen within the next couple hours. So let's get going. So as I said, I got all the shelves out here, basically got them into position. One of the first things obviously I have to do when you're doing woodworking and you're gonna move from the construction phase to the uh, staining and finishing phase is you gotta clean this place up because I had uh, a whole lot of sawdust in here and uh, because I have a fan in the kitchen kind of blowing cool air out here, it was everywhere. So I did a thorough cleaning out here and like I said, now we're ready to move on with our staining phase. Um, I'm gonna be using this same uh, uh, golden oak uh, color that I uh, used uh, with the other mineral display case because that's been sort of a go-to color I've been using for a long time. And it turns out that's the same finish that's on the desk. That's why everything in there kind of looks like it matches together because it is really the same wood and the same stain. So might as well keep it going, right? All right, we got the thing stained and uh, it's gonna look pretty good, I think. Uh, this is pretty much what the uh, other pieces have looked like when they're stained only and not with the polyurethane coating. So this is gonna look very, very good in there. Uh, it'll blend in real well and I think it'll look, uh, it'll look real sharp. It'll be a great place to display my uh, rocks and minerals. Now I gotta put a couple coats of the polyurethane coating on. And I'm going to be using that. Uh, this is the same thing I, I used on the other mineral case. So uh, this has been something I've it's been kind of my go-to. It's a nice glossy polyurethane coating that dries really quickly. So I like that stuff. And uh, let's get going. All right, we got the first coat of the polyurethane coating. You can see it a little bit. It's already glowing a little bit. This one maybe a little bit more because this is the one that was done most recently. I kind of did that one in the back there first, the middle one, and then this one. So this one's still a little wet, um, but we're gonna give it uh, maybe 30, 45 minutes or so to dry, and then we'll put the second coat on this. All right, I got a couple more coats of uh, polyurethane on the top. I also did one on the bottom just to protect it, but this looks pretty nice now, doesn't it? Look at the, look at that shine. Yeah, so it's dried off a little bit. Like I said, I did three coats on the top and one on the underside. And the one on the underside was the last one I did and it's dry now. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this into the house, install it in its location, and uh, we can start working on the electricity. Okay, so the shelves fit in there really nice. They look great in there, don't they? And I did kind of decide that I was gonna make put some of these large conversation pieces maybe on top. I don't know, we may still keep some of them on the ground uh, at some point, but that's at least a place that they can go. I'm gonna probably, you know, I've kind of decided to relocate just about everything that was up there. Um, I have some little gargoyles and they may, they may end up going up there again, but uh, I think this whole thing is gonna more or less be dedicated to just my rock and mineral collection and uh, but before we can get that done, you know, we have to put some lights in this thing. Um, now this thing already does have a light in it that kind of lit up things for when I was working uh, at the desk, but that's not gonna do, that's not gonna be used a whole lot. I'm not gonna remove that. It'll probably stay in there, uh, but that was uh, for its previous purpose. It's, uh, its new purpose is gonna be for something entirely different. So, um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna string the lights through here now and uh, let's get them all attached in here and uh, get this thing on. All right, so I'm starting to get the wiring uh, hooked up here for the lights in here. Um, right now I got it kind of running on this weird pattern because it's going through the three primary colors, the red, blue, and, the, and green, which is uh, allowing me to test that all of the elements are working. Uh, this isn't really that difficult of a thing. It's a little bit more, actually probably a little bit simpler than this one was. Cause you remember, uh, I actually made my own wire harness to uh, connect long distances on this one over here. This one, I actually realized that they had uh, little extension pieces that come with the lights, but you can also buy 
uh, custom extension uh, extender pieces that will allow you to run longer distances. And that's sort of what I had to do here because like I said, the light goes to here, the wire goes to the back, goes through the back, comes down over here, runs to this light, and then we're gonna do the same thing in the other two places. So I have to kind of, you know, run custom distances and rather than making my own wire harness like I did last time, it just made sense to buy the pre-made thing and then cut it to length and make it work. And it's going together pretty easy. It's uh, not really that complicated of a process. Uh, so uh, kudos to this company for making this pretty easy. All right, we got it all wired up and ready to go. I got it kind of in this test pattern right now. Uh, on the little LED tapes, there's actually three different colors of LED. There's a red, a green, and a blue. So by running through all three of them, we're making sure that it looks like it works right. And then uh, normally it'll be displayed like this in the uh, just the white light. And uh, that's looking good too. So... Um, I think this came together pretty well. It was a very good idea to transform my uh, desk that I wasn't using anymore into a mineral display case. Um, I did some calculations. This thing holds about 16 square feet. Um, I miscalculated before here because it's probably about 10 square feet on the top, 10 square feet in the middle, and then uh, two, uh, two boxes of uh, 8 square feet on the bottom. So my calculation that is what about 36 square feet of uh of space plus what i can put on top if i choose to do that so um i'm glad i did this it wasn't really that big of a deal because like i said i had all the lumber already i had to go buy the oak facing pieces and i had to buy another one of the light strips uh but that's kind of cool i did learn something interesting about this uh i bought two of the same exact uh light strips for here and for this one here but the remotes are different. Uh, they look like the same remote, but uh, they're obviously keyed to one unit, probably so you can have uh, more than one thing going at the same time. You know, you can plug two, three, four of them in and not have all of them turn on when one of them comes on. So that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, I was kind of figuring that when I got to it that I would have to deal with the fact that you turn one of them on, they both come on, but apparently they don't do that. So. That's kind of cool. Um, that's a good idea. That will make it easier if I want to, <clears throat> you know, program one of them to do a certain thing and the other one to do something else. Uh, that gets a little complicated if they're both working off the same remote. So anyway, um, I think I've just got one little more piece of business to deal with, and that is this. On the first video of the series, one of my viewers made a comment in the comment section asking about what the Miller Lite bottles were all about. And it doesn't really have anything to do with uh, my rock on mineral collection. It's just been something that's uh, been on my table for quite some time. And there is actually a story about this. This is a Guided by Voices reference. So um, for those of you who know what Guided by Voices is, I'm a little bit obsessed with them. You may have uh, discovered that already. Well, one of the things that they're famous for is drinking enormous amounts of beer during their shows. And um, they're also quite generous with their beer. And there have been a number of cases where I've gone to shows and the singer or the guitar player or someone just handed me a beer into the audience or I was backstage and got a beer from the band or or Bob's wife would bring, bring a beer to us or something like that. And um, whenever that happened, I kind of made a note of it and I kept the bottles and documented where they were. This one, for instance, I got on, uh, from a show called Brick by Brick in San Diego on June 21st, 2001. Uh, let's see, this one was House of Blues in Hollywood, uh, April 6, 2001. I just kind of wrote on the back of them what they were here. Um, House of Blues again in, uh, in 2002. Oops, I'm going to break one of them here right in front of you, huh? That'd be great for the show, right? Uh, this is another show at the Canes in uh, San Diego, California of 2002. And let's see, where is that one? Okay, that one doesn't say where it is, but I, that probably was uh, one of these outdoor festival things. There was an outdoor festival that Guided by Voices was a part of early on. This is showing, uh, let's see, what is it? It looks like, uh, 
Sorry, I'm looking at it upside down. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what the date was here. 10-16-2003. That may have been an outdoor festival that we went to and ended up getting pulled backstage and uh, hanging out with the band for a while. So anyway, that's what those are. I've uh, gotten a number of, uh, of beers from them and whenever possible I've tried to keep the, bo keep the bottle. And that's just part of my uh, eccentric collecting phase that you all kind of know and love about me. Uh, you know, started off with Guided by Voices stuff. Now I'm getting obsessed with rocks and that's just who your humble host is. So anyway, I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.